Hi and welcome to my channel. Now today's video is about this Sansui 210 receiver, 210 receiver that I acquired recently. Um, now I'm going to apologise first of all for the fan in the background of my PC but this is the way I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to put a picture up on the screen as well but this is the easiest way for me to kind of go over it but it does make a little bit of noise in the background. I just recently required this receiver because it got quite a, quite a few you know, reviews and bits and pieces on forums I've been reading. So this is quite a nice little low wattage, just 10 watts uh, a channel receiver. So I thought, yeah, well, let's, let's get hold of it then, I suppose. But I say pay just uh, maybe just a tad more than I should have done for it, maybe. Maybe I'm just looking for a real bargain. But uh, I've got the 200, which is only the 5 watts. It's the lowest one they do, a 5 watt receiver. I think the next one is a 221, two, two, which is 8 watts. Then this comes in at 10 watts. So, uh, yeah, I thought give this a go, see what this sounded like. Um, so I thought best to uh, check the DC bias and set it up to as it should be and the DC offset just check that before I do anything else uh, make sure it's got the right voltage and just make sure the plugs wide up as I like it it doesn't matter which way around you put the mains lead really but I just like the live going to the fuse so I'll show you all that as we go along so first of all we're gonna to have to undo this unit so to undo this unit uh, but press this before I'm going a bit ahead this is the two fuses sorry this is the two fuses we need to take out and check that we're getting 10 milliamps so yeah 10 milliamps being drawn through these fuses 10 milliamps on each channel so what we're going to do is find these fuses take them out and put one probe of the meter on this side and one probe on the meter on this side set the meter to milliamps not the camera up in here at the same time set the meter to milliamps and uh, check what reading we're getting so i'll tell you what reading i've got as we go along but uh, anyway what we're going to do first of all is take it apart so it's these four screws at the bottom and these three screws at the rear then the unit pulls forward from the front put it outwards and it'll all come through drag the mains lead through etc i'm going to check it's at 240 volts and it is and as we look inside as you can see it's quite clean inside now before we go any further next thing you've got to do is either put a load an 8 ohm load uh, across the speaker terminals or uh, a speaker which is what I've done here I haven't actually got a picture of it but what I've actually done because this is a capacitor coupled amplifier it needs a, a load on it so uh, I've stuck a, a pair of speakers uh, across you know one for the left one for the right so I've got a pair of speakers connected up to this amplifier I'm gonna have the volume on zero I'm gonna have it set to auxiliary and we're gonna have no inputs nothing nothing plugged in the back apart from them speakers one on each channel so an old, I usually use an old pair of speakers or a driver that's eight ohms, something like that. Uh, so yeah, use any of that. So that's what I've got connected here, don't forget. I, at the back of it, on the speaker terminals, I've got a speaker on each terminal, just to let you know before we start. So that, that's a must. So now we look. Uh, these are the two fuses I mentioned earlier. One's red with the arrows, just to give you an indication. I'll come to that in a minute. One's blue. So what happens here is the red this top fuse is controlled here we're going to change the setting here by this little variable resistor here so that changes the setting of this fuse changes the milliamps being drawn and this fuse here the blue one i've labeled up blue this is the pot over here that's going to adjust the uh, current being drawn by that so uh, just to let you know which one does what right okay so what have i done next right i've took the fuses out as you can see there they both are so there are them taken out don't forget I've got the speakers connected at the rear the speakers are connected just want to make sure you know that again so this time I've got me uh, meter connected up here by a few leads I use here these crocodile clips just makes it easier than holding it in there just keeps it connected like that so I just use my meter now you must make sure that your meter is set to uh, DC milliamps so uh, yeah make sure it's set to DC milliamps and we're going to put it across make sure you know first of all before before you do all this it's all turned off before you start connecting all these leads up and everything uh you've got everything out of the way you've got a bit of space all that kind of stuff you're not under any pressure you've got a bit of time because you've got to concentrate what you're doing here if you're going to attempt this yourself but i'm just showing you what i did so be a bit careful so okay so we've got our connections here so i'm just going to bring this here just to make sure meter set to dc milliamps which i have and this is the pot we're going to use to change to, if that was high and now when i first turned it on you've got, to know, you've got to have this warmed up for about 20 minutes as well keep it on for about 20 minutes like i say volume zero and auxiliary nothing connected to it no nothing plugged in at the back apart from the speakers let it warm up for about 20 minutes and when i first done this after about 20 minutes this was reading 14.3 on this particular channel so uh, i managed to get it down to exactly 10 but of course when i took a couple of pictures 
it kept on landing at 9.9, .9, so I couldn't be bothered taking any more, but it was on 10, I got it to 10, they just keep the fluctuate, 9.9 .9 or 10, it may go 10.1, something like that, it's going to fluctuate just a little bit, but long as you're thereabouts, which this is, and 14.3 weren't a million miles away anyway, so uh, well, it's nothing to worry about really, but uh, just going to get it bang on really, so uh, as Manuel said, so that channel there, like I say, we got to 10, so what we're going to do is exactly the same for the other channel, is connect it up on the other fuse, as you can see, there's the pot over here, and to adjust this pot. Now, when I first turned this on, and like I say, after 20 minutes, it read 10.4, I think it was. So it was hardly out at all. But uh, I've just done a very small adjustment and got it down to 10.1, fluctuating again to 10 to 10.1. And of course, when I saw the picture, 10.1, but uh, there you go. It's nearer than anything else. So there you go. So that's that one done there. We don't forget the speakers are connected at this stage as well. Now they stay connected because we're going to see the DC, what the DC uh, offset is. Now the speakers are still connected. These are the speakers I use. You can put a pair of speakers, like I say, or a driver, which I've used here. I've got eight ohm driver. And what I've done here, I've put the meter across the driver. So the meter is connected positive to positive on this particular driver, positive to positive and negative to negative across the speaker. Don't forget the speaker is connected to the back of the amplifier. So as, as per normal, as you normally would. You could have a normal pair of speakers. You could actually put the prongs on the back of the amplifier across the speaker terminals, positive and negative, but th this, this particular amplifier's got such a small set of terminals, they're, they're minute, that I decided to do it this way with Crocodile Crips. It was just easier for me. And as you can see, this is just reading 0 0.2 millivolts, so that channel is excellent. And if we go over to the other channel, it's a little bit higher, 2.2 .2 millivolts, but that's nothing at all to worry about, that's great. 50 years old, that's fantastic really. Not just great, absolutely fantastic really. So there you go, so that's all set up nicely. Uh, one more thing that I do, I just like doing this, I thought I'd mention it again here as well, I've done a video about it, so go and watch the video, I'll put a link to it now if you want to know what I'm rabbiting on about and what I worry about this for, but it just gives me peace of mind, just something I like to do. It doesn't matter which way round you connect up these two pronged, these two wires, shall I say, or two pronged amplifiers that go around. Either way, they're going to work, no problem at all. But I just have it like having the live connected to the live side of the fuse. So the live here, this live terminal here, goes all the way into the amplifier. It goes across these outputs here, these um, switch outputs here. Uh, but the live goes to the fuse. I just like it that way of the unit. So um, yeah, this is actually connected up. This as a wire goes underneath, comes back up here to the fuse. Just the way I like it in the circuit. Like I say, go and watch that video if you're interested a bit more why I've done it that way. So that's it. This amplifier is all set up now. Going to give it a listen at some stage when I get a bit of time. Still doing a few other bits and pieces. Waiting for some bulbs to come in as well. Uh, this amplifier we'll see, should I say, had some very dim bulbs on it. I'm not too sure what's happened to them. Uh, so I've ordered some extra bulbs for this and for my Sansui 331. And uh, going to come back and eventually at some stage, going to do a complete comparison, I think, between this, the 200 and the 331. To kind of give out which is the best one out of the three, I think. I'll go for something like that. Uh, give it a bit of a go and see what happens anyway. Uh, until the next video, I'll say thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.